Welcome back, everybody. My name is All Fun and Games. I stream every day on Twitch TV, and I also make fun little videos here on YouTube. Let's get into it by making a little butterfly farm, shall we? So as you can see next to me, I've created a tiny little farm. Now, it doesn't need to be this small. It could be as big as you want, or you don't even need to make one if you don't want, which I actually prefer. I like to let my cocoons roam around our base because I think they're cool. The only problem is that if your friends or whatever that join the game decide to kill it, well, it might not be the best idea. So nonetheless, I have a penned up cocoon, I have an unpenned up cocoon, and hopefully it doesn't get itself into trouble. But essentially the way this works is you're going to basically be making sure that you go ahead and catch yourself some butterflies, where that'll let you replant and put down more flowers wherever you want them to go. Once you do that, you're going to essentially either leave this back gate open and making sure that you have wood fences in your inventory, or you just obviously open the doors and hopefully double doors and you can have the cocoon follow you. How do you get the cocoon to follow you? Easy peasy. All you got to do is feed it. And then once you do decide to feed it, the loyalty meter will go up. Of course, if the cocoon is already fed and actually went through the process of eating recently, it's not going to want to eat anymore. And that's the bonus about the cocoon and why it does or does not want any more food. The loyalty meter is now 1.5. It's going to follow us around when it's no longer attacking anything else. It's going to follow through and kill this butterfly for us. And then once it does, it will continue to follow us around. It might take you a little bit to actually get the cocoon to actually follow you. And of course, you are going to be essentially bringing it from the biomes over here where is it at you can go to the pig biome and the, where the actual pig king is and find plenty of stumps with the cocoons around them it will take you a while to actually get them to follow you but it's pretty simple all it takes is a few butterflies basically what you do at that point is once they're inside of your base you either let them roam around if you really want them to around the flowers because they're not going to eat the flowers and they're not going to really eat too many butterflies pretty much from there all you're doing is just picking up as many of the butterfly wings as you want so now this thing is essentially killing the butterflies for us. Now, before in a previous video, I showcased that leaving Abigail in aggressive mode would essentially just attack all the butterflies. This is the same thing without having to basically wait around. Now, opening the door will eventually, you know, the cocoon could eventually jump out. Oops. And also accidentally picking up flowers is a little bit tough in a side of a crowded little area like this. But keep in mind that the bigger the area, the better. And just make sure that, you know, you create it however you want to create it. Now, I'd probably recommend that while you are near the flowers, that try to stay around here a little bit because as the player is around the actual flowers, more butterflies will spawn. So just keep that in mind. Yes, well, they will spawn off screen and all that other stuff, but a player definitely needs to be around the area. So it kind of has to be within your base. Of course, like I said, you could have a free roaming cocoon if you want. You could have a closed in cocoon. I like the closed in cocoon. But now be careful if you're playing any character that does not actually, you know, it's not welcomed by any type of mob. So for example, if you decide to be a war talks running around, you're going to get attacked by the cocoon. So it might not be the best way, but however, if you are a cat, if you are playing as war talks, which I will showcase here in just one second, you're essentially going to be obviously getting a ton of souls, depending on how often they're killing butterflies. So yeah, just remember that. And here I am over here, and if I'm near the cocoon, it's going to attack me through the actual thing. So if I actually go a little bit closer like this, the range on the cocoon is pretty is pretty large. And that's actually why it works out so well against butterflies. Because even if the butterflies are further away from them, as long as the attack pattern is hitting, the actual cocoon will hit said butterfly but like i said if you're too close it's going to attack you now the one thing to worry about as well is it's not going to attack any of the wood fences so you don't have to worry too much about that but just if you are playing a character that is obviously not welcomed by spiders and such you just want to be a little bit cautious but like i said the more things are surrounded by it the more you're going to be getting souls the more you're able to go in and get your pen and make sure that the actual butterflies are being eaten but of course as a war talks or some sort of player like this that if you're playing a character that it might not be like the normal characters you're going to be careful because the cocoon is going to target you instead of said butterfly the other bonus is what you're seeing right here. The cocoon is going to give you multiple different prizes essentially for feeding them. So every single time the butterfly gets eaten or whatever item you have around there, the cocoon is going to, yeah, spit out a bunch of whatever it has. And it might just be some random things that you've been searching for. So this is why cocoon farming and also butter far butterfly farming is a really, really work well hand in hand so it's kind of a two-part video in a sense because cocoons do really well and a lot of people don't really use them so yeah there we go how do we make said farm let's talk about that now 
So as we get a chance, we're gonna go ahead and create ourselves our little tiny science machine. And then once we create our science machine, we're gonna unlock the ability to make fences. And here we go. As soon as we get ourselves some fences, we do not have a chance to make a door or a wood gate, I should say, but it only requires three twigs and three grass to make one rope, and you can make as many fences as you want. Making one set will give you six, and basically before you know it, you're gonna have a full setup. Do you need to have a door? Of course. Eventually down the road, when you finally get yourself an alchemy machine, you're going to be able to create the door as well. If you want to find out how to do this in a full year of Don't Starve Together step-by-step -step guide, feel free to check out my full guide on Don't Starve Together, where I showcase an entire year in DST on how to get everything that I'm showcasing here. And yeah, there you go. So like I said, if you, don't know how, if you don't know how to actually make yourself a nice little butterfly farm, this is essentially what I usually do. Now, everybody has their own format. Like I said, sometimes people are okay with just catching a cocoon and leaving it at that. But I like to pen them up because I think it's a lot nicer. And I can walk around as war talks and not have to worry about it catch, like basically catching a little left-hander from <laughs> the cocoon. So yeah, go ahead, post your ideas if you have any other cool uh, ways that you do the cocoon farms. But I love them. I think it works out great. And like I said, the trinkets are worth it. Just remember that if your friend or anybody is playing as, as War Talks, not to hang out next to the gate because you're just going to make the cocoon focus on you instead of the actual getting all of the butterflies killed for you so you have a nice lunch in the afternoon. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.